Hey everybody, what's going on? You caught me out here working in the shop. I promised you guys a quick follow-up video on the Datsun. I know a lot of you guys are kind of curious how this thing's gonna turn out, and hey man, you just never know. We're just kind of rolling with the punches. There's no kind of a, uh, a uh, guide to doing this, you know what I mean? Definitely no owner's manual gonna t teach you how to weld two trucks together, I don't guess, but basically what I've got going on, and I did a little bit of work off of camera, I've actually got the old cab fastened to the 1995 Nissan cab. Here's the old cab, here's the 95 Nissan, the firewall, what's left of it. And I've actually got this fastened down. Look, what I did is I raised this back up just enough to, to get clearance to where none of this was interfering with it anymore. What we've got here is this kind of an oddly shaped top going onto this firewall. And it's, it's, all kinds of layers going on in there. There's no way to trim it any further than what we've already trimmed it without sacrificing all of our heat and air duct work, you name it, everything that's going on in there. And all of that stuff is the whole reason why I wanted to do this to begin with. I need all that to stay, you know? So anyway, we got it up just high enough to where there's no interference now. Look at this. Nothing's interfering anymore all the way through here. All we'll have to do is go back in and just fill that space and not a big deal that got us up high enough this is where our uh, windshield wipers and everything fasten to and look we've got space now we could go back in with windshield wipers because that's kind of important right the best part is it's all fastened down every time i rolled this thing in to work on it everything would move all around because nothing was tack welded together or anything and you'd spend an hour or two trying to get everything situated back where it was supposed to be left to right front to back you know everything square level all that kind of stuff that you got to do but we don't have to worry about that anymore because we are welded down look this is what i did i made a little pedestal here over on the side boxed just box square tubing one inch square tubing uh, it had a funky little shape down at the bottom so i had to kind of contour the bottom of it to fit on here so that it would sit on this and still be straight up and down right and then look our factory spot welds from the old Dotson cab perfect to come back in and plug weld now we are fastened in all i've got to do at this point i did the same thing over on the other side the other side you'll see what i mean about how the the uh, firewall has a weird shape to it because you saw how tall that side that pedestal had to be compared to this side look how short it is I assure you, all of this is perfectly level. We made sure of that. We leveled the frame first when we were doing it. We had it level down here. And then of course, you come up here and you make this level as well. We, we made sure this was level. You remember we put a jack underneath it. It was slightly down, maybe about like that far. We got it level. So with the frame level, this level, and then this level, everything was ready to come together and she is fastened in she's solid too she don't move around no more you can get in it push around on it slam the doors it don't matter she's there I also went up inside the, the the wheel wells up in the firewall under the bottom here i'll get a light for you this is over on the driver's side you can see where i've already started to fill it in see that we're officially attaching the nissan hard body cab which is all of that right to the old Dotson cab, which is all of this over here. And it's coming together, man, it's nice. This, to me, in my opinion, this is where things start to get kind of easy because now everything is where it needs to be. It's all level, it's all square, everything. It's all cool, man. Uh, the wheels fit inside the wheel wells here. The wheel arches perfectly on both sides. The only thing I need to do at this point is I believe we're sitting a little bit low on the cab right here on the back where it comes in contact with that Nissan hard body floor right there. Uh, we're a little bit low, just slightly. I'm talking like this much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack up both corners here on both sides, get that where it's level across here because look at this. Those wheels on the back are so big. By the way, we're not, we don't have any idea what wheels we're gonna run yet. Probably something along, something stock. I don't know. I don't really want anything sticking out past the fenders. I want this truck to be bagged. I want it to lay frame. And I can't have anything sticking out past the fenders. So uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. But it, I, I seriously doubt it's going to be anything like that. But those have the ass end of it jacked up so high. Look how high I have to jack up the front of it just to get it level. We're level here. Or I'm sorry, we're not level here. We're level on the frame, okay? This needs to come up, like I said, about that much. So that's what we're doing right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a filler piece for the rear that's gonna come right here in the middle. 
just going to fit up in this in, up inside there like that but we got to do some bending and some drilling and all that fun stuff first so that's where we're at right now let's get started on it okay so here's my setup i've already got my piece trimmed up i'm going to go ahead and drill my holes in it from the spot welds got this piece here i just want it to fit right inside of here okay so it, it fits in between there perfectly we just need to get it drilled out for some spot welds. So what I'm gonna do is I'll probably put about four spot welds in here. And we're gonna do it on top and bottom. So there we are, all drilled out with our spot welds. You see them there? Uh, I'm gonna bump up a few sizes. I think we'll probably end up with about around a 10 millimeter hole before we're done and then we'll go back through we'll make our bend and then we can start plug welding so as i'm punching out the holes we get up to a bigger size obviously and uh that's when things get a little tricky when you're drilling the sheet metal, you better be careful, man. When you get up into these bigger drill bits, this thing will start spinning around on you. And if you're trying to hold it like I was earlier by hand, it could get dangerous, man. <laughs> this thing could turn into like a spinning blade. So once I get up into the bigger sizes, I will go ahead and clamp it down. And you know, you can get away with kind of holding it by hand with a little eighth inch drill bit, but you ain't gonna get away with it with this. I could just about promise you. So anyway, I'll finish up this last round of, of uh, holes and this, is about an eight millimeter. I might just stop there. That's pretty well close to what the factory had in it. So we'll probably just punch it out to this size and call it good. Man, that brand new drill works good, doesn't it? sent to me by a subscriber and I do appreciate it man it's gonna get tons of use out in this show shop I promise you that I'm just gonna go through dress all this up now my little three inch angle grinder about 120 grit sandpaper also sent to me by a viewer awesome. That's gonna do good enough. So now comes the fun part. We're just gonna put a simple 90 degree bend right down the middle of it. And you could do this at home, so simple, without any kind of fancy tools when it comes to little stuff like this. I believe this to be 16 gauge, if I remember right. Um, so plenty thick enough. It's actually way thicker than the, the factory sheet metal. So anyway, this ought to be very strong when we're done and still easy enough to bend. I'm just gonna use the frame of this truck. And basically, I'm just gonna bend this right down the middle, so. What I'll do is I'll line up the edge of the frame of the truck right where I want my bend to be. I mean, it's pretty simple, pretty basic. And what we'll do is we'll take, I got a little piece of, piece of metal here that I'm gonna use that needs to go right on top of that, just like that. And then we're gonna sandwich the two between a C-clamp here. Takes a little bit of doing, but you'll get it. You see how I have to, gotta kind of contort my fingers around and all kinds of mess, right? That's all right. Oh, ho, ho. well, thanks for nothing, Harbor Freight. Golly, snapped right in half. Look at that. God. I wasn't even putting a hurt on it. I don't, whatever. So now I should be able to just take my little hammer here. It's got a nice big flat area there. We're just going to kind of tap it down. See here where it's actually it's bending right along the line of that frame, just like we want. Let me set you guys down for a second. Pretty simple. Oh, it looks close enough to me. 
see what we got here. That's what we want. Close enough. Get a little closer. Getting better all the time. Let's go fit it in. Take my little flapper disc here on my angle grinder. I'm gonna work off some of the paint around the area. Uh, I need the bottom of the this side here on the floor to be worked all that paint off, and then we're gonna have to go around on the inside and work some of the paint off of the cab. All of these little twisty jacks here. I always save these. Anytime I can find one out at the old salvage yard, these come in handy. What I'm gonna do, I got one set up on each corner on the rear. We're just gonna jack it up just slightly till we get it level at the rear. It's just slightly down in the back. I'm talking maybe quarter inch, half inch tops. So let's just get that worked up just a little bit. I'll go over to the other side and work it up as well. We'll kind of work it out at the same time till we get it level. Kind of see we're starting to get a little gap there. This was sitting. Look how floppy that is. This was sitting on top of here a second ago. So we're just about there. It doesn't need much. Put these in right on top of the, the cab where the cab mounts are on both sides to space it up over this tunnel for the drive shaft tunnel there. And we're showing to be level. We're in the middle there. So our side to side is good. Uh, also through the level up here, up under the drip rail. And we're showing to be level there. I think we're good. Um, next thing is I'm going to jump around on the inside of here. I got a little bit of cleaning to do, get some of the stuff out of the way. We'll work some paint off in this area on the inside, and then we'll get everything to line up, and we'll get our new little piece in there. Get that tied together, man. Get some rigidity back in there. That's ridiculous. Pull on my cool little boat seat. Not sure what kind of seats we're actually going to put in this, but whatever they are, they're going to have to sit down on the, uh, right down on the floor. We made mention on the last video that we're going to have to take these little, these little guys out here, which they just sit right on the floor with some spot welds. These will be super easy to remove on both sides. And then whatever seat we go with is going to be, bam, right on the floor. Probably no seat tracks or anything. Uh, we got to sit low in this one. We don't have a whole lot of headroom in this one. Uh, even with me sitting down on the floor, I literally have like maybe that much headroom. So not a lot going on there. But I think with the steering column shortened just a bit, it's all gonna work out just fine. So I'm not even worried about it at all. Let's get our bracket in there for now. I was noticing our metal's a little bit messed up right there. It's kind of bent in the middle. You get in there and do a little hammer dolly work. This will be simple because we can actually access both sides, you know. Here's my dolly here, just a basic dolly you'd get most in most any hammer dolly sets. And we're just gonna come and tap in on the on the back side while we hold pressure on that. Now obviously this is necessary because without it, I mean that's what you're gonna be dealing with, right? So obviously you need something behind it to hold it and it doesn't take much to sit there and just kind of hold that while you tap on it from the other side oh yeah that's coming out good shouldn't take much more of that I think we'll have it Kind of hold our dolly over to the side just a bit. See if we can't get that to, to come out just a little more in the middle. Look at that. That's what we need. We'll do a little more over here. Now it's a lot flatter. That way when we lay our, our piece up there, it'll lay on there nice and flat. We won't have a weird little gap in between it or anything like that. Yeah, remember this guy here? It's gonna slide right in there just like so. We'll attach it whichever way we want. Like, I think what I'll do is I'll push it out just a little bit. 
I mean, every little bit counts when you want some room for speaker boxes or something like that. And we have the ability to kind of, I mean, look at that. We can, I mean, look at that. We got extra, extra inch and a half, inch and a half of room there. Just, just doing a little that. I don't think that would hurt anything. I suppose you wouldn't want to push it too far back because you don't want it to interfere with the bed. But I think even if, even by putting it about right there would be okay. See if we can get our first weld on here. Alright, I think we're held in a position now. So I'm going to try to get you guys some welding shots without destroying what's left of my camera. So I'll have to kind of keep you guys a little further back from now on. That camera's got so much welding slag on it, it's crazy. There's my red bird, y'all. She's out there keeping me company as usual. Now I'm still not sure if that's good luck, bad luck, or what. Some of you guys are torn on that. I've had a lot of you guys comment that that's, that's good luck or that that's someone that's passed that's come along to uh, visit you and stuff like that. I don't know what it is. I just know she is there every single time I'm out here and it's been months. And I've already tried, you know, taping the window and doing all that because some people say that it's just seeing its reflection or what have you, but that didn't even help. Okay, so where are we? Everything, it, I mean, this thing is bolted down solid, man, or I guess I should say welded down solid. She ain't going nowhere. Look at it. She's all one piece, y'all. She's all one piece, finally. No more, uh, you know, everything moving around every time I touch it, which was basically what we had going on. I could not touch this thing without something slipping, sliding going out of alignment and then i'd have to sit and measure 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 try to get it all back well we're locked in finally locked in and look our gaps are all still good that's a nice gap running down through there look at that really nice so i have designed and redesigned this thing a hundred times in my head i swear and a lot of it's just because you run into little things along the way that you don't know that you're going to run into until you run into them so anyway one of those things is a headroom. There's just not a lot going on there. And there would be absolutely no way to run the factory style uh, seats from that from that Nissan Hard Buddy, which I actually have sitting over there in the floor. It'll bolt right in here, but it sits up too high. I mean, I'm literally my whole head is crammed against the roof, so that is not possible. I've got this cool little boat seat in here, which seems to be working perfectly. It's sitting right on the floor. You can see I've got plenty of headroom. I mean, that'll work just fine. I've got plenty of leg room. This actually feels really comfortable. I kind of like the way, I, way I'm sitting in here. I fit in here just right. I mean, this actually feels like it's gonna be a lot of fun to drive. I mean, everything is just, everything's just right, except for the steering wheel. That is definitely, that column's gonna have to get shortened for sure. I, mean, I don't know if you can see it, but I mean, it's just right here. It's ridiculous. It needs to be further that way. And I think that'll make it perfect. The gear shift, everything is just right. I'm loving it, man. This, I think this, this feels good. It has a good feel to it. So that brings me to my dilemma. I wanted to do a crazy body drop on this where, you know, the no rocker panels, no nothing. I wanted it to basically sit on the bottom of the doors when it's, when the air suspension is aired out, but there's just no way. I think I showed this to you guys on the last video. You can see just how far down that frame hangs down. That's how much more we would have to body drop it to get the bottom of these rockers, this right here, to sit on the ground, which is what I was hoping for. And I just don't have the headroom for it. There's just no way. Okay, so I've got an idea that I think would actually be kind of cool and would, would be even better than laying it down on the uh, bottom of the doors. This, this I think will work. I took an old running board that I had laying around, chopped it up. Basically, I got rid of the steps. See how it's got the steps there? I just kind of left us with just the tubing itself uh god that's got to be at least three inches 
and we got these cool little bins here as well so bear with me here while i mock this up and i'll show you guys what i'm wanting to do Okay, so obviously this is gonna be a cool little exhaust tip, and I think I'll weld it to this pipe over here. We'll dress it up a little bit before, and uh, that's kind of what I'm going for there. We'll get these two pieces welded together. I'm using a piece of angle iron for these to kind of sit into. That'll help kind of hold them to where they're a little easier to line up that way because you just drop it down into that little V right there, right? The little channel. You can usually slide your next piece right up there to it and it'll line up pretty well. So anyway, I'm going to do that right now. So the reason I cut the rocker panels off to begin with is because the bed on these actually stops like up here. For, you know, you got this rocker panel that hangs down on the cab and then the bed is like way up here and it looks funny. So in my opinion, you, you got a choice. You either extend the bed down to match the cab or you cut the cab up to match the bed. And like I said, I was hoping to body drop this and all of that, but we just don't have the headroom. So the next best thing I think would be rather than adding to the bed, what if we just put something else in here instead of a rocker panel? Something cool like a side pipe, dude. How cool would that be to have like an integrated side pipe? Not none of this stuff that sticks out like back in the 70s and the 80s, but something that's actually kind of molded in with the body of the truck. Basically, this could be the rocker panel. You know what I'm saying? And the cool part is, is we could extend it all the way out to where it fills in that part of the bed you see what i'm saying and it'll kind of exit right in front of the back tire how cool would that be man i think that would be awesome having it tucked in there like that obviously we'd have to do just a little more trim in here to make it fit right but dude i think that's doable now obviously we put one on each side make it look cool and we could like split the exhaust have uh two cylinders on one side two on the other side kind of like a motorcycle or something i think that would be awesome this thing would probably sound amazing especially these big old pipes man those are like three inch pipes now imagine having two cylinders running through each one of these one on each side of the truck dude i think that'll be amazing dude so that's my plan like i said sometimes plans change through the course of a project that is not uncommon whatsoever but rather than let it stop us let's just figure something else out and just keep moving right forward just right ahead just keep going I mean, hell, we ain't gonna let something like that stop us. I mean, look at all the room we have to mess around with now. The way this is being designed, the way you know we had to cut all the inner fender wells out, we've got plenty of room to come in, put us a header on here, and then we'll just split it into two. We'll run two out that way and two off over that way. We can make it work. I guarantee we can make it work. And obviously we'll go down to the exhaust shop and buy some actual pipe. I just had that laying around out in the yard. I cut that thing open about caught the shop on fire. All this stuff fell out of it. Yeah, we just dug it out of the yard. It was laying out there and I thought, you know, this will make a perfect little mock-up tube for a uh, side pipe. So I just dug it out, cut it up, and there you go. Just to kind of give us some reference. A little visual, you know, kind of helps uh, with the designing process when you can actually see things versus just dreaming it up in your mind. So anyway, that's the whole reason I mocked that up. Uh, you, I might could actually make some side pipes out of those if I had another one. I probably got another one laying around here somewhere. That's right, Weird Beer's gonna bring side pipes back. It's long overdue. We're gonna mix old and new and all of that, old school, new school, all of that kind of stuff. I love, I love that. I think it's great when you take something that's kind of, I don't know, ordinarily they look at that as being kind of outdated or what have you, but when you add it to something kind of a newer style, you know, a bagged and body drop truck that lays frame and all of that, all of a sudden side pipes look cool. In my personal opinion, side pipes have always looked cool, but uh, it's just nobody does them anymore, and I think that's a damn shame, and I think we should change that with this truck. 
And not to mention how amazing this thing's gonna sound, I can't wait to hear it. But the best part is for today, we have got this cab solidly mounted. That's hard to say, solidly mounted. Anyway, it's on here and she ain't going nowhere and she's sturdy. Our gaps, man, look at them. They're still nice and straight all the way down. The doors open and shut awesome. What more do you want? But you can see here, all we got left is to go in and just fill in our side pieces. You know, just run a strip of metal down through there, plug weld it, weld it over here to the uh, the cab, basically just tying these two pieces together. You can see where it's kind of rough cut. It looks terrible. I want to come in. I want to straighten all of these edges out, make them nice and neat. Obviously, we got a few layers that still need to come off. That needs to come off for the seat, kind of a seat pedestal there. Got to go. Uh, we got some stuff here. We'll have to drill out, get that off. And then we come in, fill in the sides, fill in the back, and then the fun part, filling in all up in there in that firewall and across the top up here. That's going to be the headache, and I, that's probably mostly what I'll make my videos about. I won't get too involved with all of this, obviously. I will show you the guys that, but we won't make complete videos about it. I think this is what's going to be the most interesting is getting all of that sealed back up we got to get all of this closed in obviously it's got to be closed in through here too we can't have water running in here and having any of that be opened up in behind there you see see what i'm talking about all that will have to get sealed off obviously once we pull the fenders off it'll expose a lot of this makes it so much easier to get to it and be able to get in there kind of close all of that back out and then we could get in to rebuilding our inner structure which will probably just be done out of some tubing of some sort and make our radiator support fit back in here so we can get our headlights and stuff in you guys join me on the next video i told you i wanted to do a quick little follow-up video on this i kind of felt like i left y'all hanging a little bit last time not getting any tack welds on and i told you that was <laughs> that was the main goal of the video was to get this thing tacked and then ended up not not getting to fit it in there but anyway she's tacked now she's good to go there's your little follow-up i do appreciate you guys following along on this this is a very very involved uh build and i'm sure we'll be messing with it for a while to go and uh we'll get back to being able to drive it again that'll be fun but hey that's a wrap for me that doesn't have to be for you you could jump in there and hit the old playlist man i've got lots of videos i got a whole playlist on this one where it started when we drove the old dotson or actually it was a nissan hard buddy from the uh copart yard man we drove that thing home and then cut it to pieces and as you can see we're still cutting so lots of cutting lots of welding that's how these projects are most of you guys know that so anyway, still lots to do. Like I said, uh, please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. I really do appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate all the support we get on the channel, man. You guys are sending all kinds of stuff, everything from gift cards to tools to supplies, you name it. And I, I can't believe it. It has been a lot of fun to say the least. You guys are great. You guys want to make sure to tune in next time. I think I'm going to finally get on the Saturn. Yeah, the bearings showed up. They finally showed up. There's a few days late, but they're here, and that's all that matters. We'll get that Saturn in here. That's our flip car. Anybody that don't know, we flip cars around here, and then we do side jobs as well. These are just little side projects that I have sitting around the yard, personal projects. We've also got you know, all this stuff over here. I'm sure most of you guys know about the 59 Coronet. We'll get a video out on that one here before too long. Uh, the temperatures are going to be pretty good here in the next few days. Maybe we can get some painting done. We'll see. But now that this thing's welded together, I can roll it out of here without moving everything around and uh, everything will stay positioned right where it's supposed to be, just the way we need it. Make life a lot easier. We'll get the Saturn in here. We'll get those rod bearings put in it. You guys wish me luck on that one. Could be a complete waste of time. We don't know. We'll see. So far, she's looking pretty good, though. I can't wait to get the, the ass end of it set down a little bit. I mean, once we get the blocks in it and get get the rear end of it lowered down it's going to look so much better it's kind of reared up in the back and i don't like it i want it to sit level and then get them big old blocks in there get that rear end up where it's supposed to be we'll have to cut off the bump stop and then we'll have to see notch or figure out what we're going to do about building a new rear frame we'll see you guys leave me a comment man what do y'all think i like ideas man some of you guys have already done some of this stuff before you know a lot of the mini truck stuff and i'm all ears man i love hearing you guys' ideas i know there's all kinds of different ways to do these things and one thing i learned is these things are actually pretty damned easy to work on so that's cool but anyway i'm going to get on out of here everybody thanks for watching i'll see y'all next time